I am Cindy PA. I am the yeah. creator and owner of A Piece of Me Skincare. Um, as you said, I created this company because I felt that there was a need mm -hmm. for uh, a line of skincare products that will also help you with your self-care um, for you to take a time out. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times we just throw skin, you know, products on our body just to feel beautiful or to cover up something. Mm -hmm. um, my journey, I've always been a, skin, a skincare junkie. That's first and foremost. <laughs> um, how I came upon this journey and you, sp you speak about anger, mm -hmm. is I, I had anger issues that were serious. I can honestly tell you they started when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. um, and it started with mother and daughter issues. You know, me and my mom, we don't have a, a good relationship. And even right. until this day, we don't have, we don't have a connection. Right. And that led to me feeling not loved, not wanted. So I kept my guard up when it came to anybody and everybody. Mm -hmm. So um, I felt that by keeping a wall up and protecting myself from not being hurt, mm -hmm. it was good to be mean. It was good to be angry. angry. It was good mm -hmm. for me to, um, I, I wasn't a bully, but I, I, was, I, I was very aggressive. You know, mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't let anybody get over on me or let anything pass. I, I couldn't let things go. I held on to grudges. And as I, you know, became into womanhood, those things started affecting me. Um, the good thing was it didn't affect me as far as keeping a job. I, I've always excelled in every job I had out in the workforce. But it did cause issues with them, with my siblings. Mm -hmm. um, with people who I, at the time I was friends with, mm -hmm. um, I saw how people would want me to be with them when they were having issues or they needed a voice. Cause I was the one like, yeah, I got your back. I'm ready. Right. But when it was time when I wanted to like express myself and my pain, no one wanted mm -hmm. to hear it. They wanted me to stay the, you know, yeah. keep the S on your chest. We like you, you know. Right. Um, we like you this way. So mm -hmm. um, as time went on, um, I started noticing, Melody, that when I would get angry, when I would get upset, I felt like trembles in my body. I could mm -hmm. actually feel my body shake. I wouldn't be shaking, but I could feel the insides of my organs shake. Um, I also started having headaches. I started having restless nights, insomnia. Mm -hmm. um, I became paranoid. I thought people were talking about me at times. Um, I started having depression because I wasn't able to express the feelings, the emotions that I, was, that I had. Mm -hmm. um, so eight years ago, let's go nine years ago, mm -hmm. nine years ago, I noticed that I was heavily indulging in alcohol to soothe my pain. I was like, you know, um, when, and it was like Fridays. Like when Fridays came, it was mm -hmm. like I could drink a whole bottle of vodka and mm -hmm. put on music and I'll be this party person. And, you know, I would have my friends over. But once the bottle was gone and the friends was gone, the problem was still there. Yeah. And, I, and I was always angry and at that time, I didn't know why I was angry because I never wanted to think about it. Mm -hmm. I had an idea of what was going on, but I didn't want to think about it. So eight years ago, I started having problems with and more like my insomnia got more intense. Right. But I also noticed that my breathing was off and um, like with palpitations. Right. My heart was palpitating, mm -hmm. like really speeding up fast. So what I thought was I was premenopausal because I was diagnosed pre-menopause. Pre, pre so I just thought that, 
this part of it. I was going to work. My coworkers, they noticed that I was sleeping at work. I would tell them, hey, wake me up. And one day, one of my coworkers couldn't wake me up. He was like shaking me. He was like, Cindy, you know, that's, that's not normal that you're sleeping like this. I was like, yeah. You know, he was like, you know, you seem like you're moving slow. And I was yeah. like, yeah, I've been tired. Mm -hmm. um, come to find out, I, I went to see my doctor. Mm -hmm. And um, she did an EKG. And she comes in the room. And my husband is with her. And they look like, like, I was like, well, what is, what's wrong? And she was like, I don't know how you walked in here. She was like, there's something serious wrong with your heart. Mm. So fast forward, went through the emergency room. They took me upstairs to the heart, the cardio floor. And they told me I had heart failure. And I was wow. like, what do you mean I have heart failure? It was like, your, your heart, only 10% of your heart is working. Um, they were asking me about drugs. They were asking me about alcohol. I told them, like, yeah, I drink. You know, I told them on the weekend, I, I, I get it in. <laughs> um, was I a smoker? And I mm -hmm. told them at the time, I had stopped smoking cigarettes for about seven years. Mm -hmm. So they were like, okay. They were like, diabetes? I was like, no. High blood pressure? No. Mm -hmm. um, so they was like, well, it has to be one of those things you just don't know. Right. And I don't know what came over me. And I just think it was the divine. And I said, it's me. Mm -hmm. And the doctor was like, what do you mean it's you? I said, it's me. I said, I have, I'm, I'm emotionally damaged. I was like, I've been carrying about so much baggage for basically all my life. I was mm -hmm. like, I've damaged my heart. I was like, because I, I carry so much in my heart. Mm -hmm. Doctors, were, they, they weren't listening to me. They were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> we see the history, you know, because all my siblings, my dad, my mom, everybody has high blood pressure and diabetes. So they was like, you know, you know, we're going to find it. And I was like, no, you're not going to find it. I was like, I eat pretty good. I mm -hmm. exercise at the time. I was taking a water aerobic class. Um, I love going to the park. I love going to the track. I'm very active. Um, I had a very good social life. Mm -hmm. I knew that I had did this to myself. Mm -hmm. So they ran the test. They, they did everything and they came back and they were like, we, we don't understand. We, we never saw anything like this. So my cardiologist is a Jewish man. Mm -hmm. And he was like, still digging, still digging. He's mm -hmm. going to find out what's wrong. My heart specialist is a Japanese man. <laughs> One night, before he left, he came down to my room and he didn't have the team with him. And he said, Cindy, tell me about your emotional state. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, you know, I, I, I'm very angry. I'm very um, depressed. I'm sad. I, I feel like that, you know, I don't, I'm not worthy. Mm -hmm. And he was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I told him, I said, you know, recently I've been praying for something and I don't know what. And I was like, I think this is it. I think this is my last chance. I think I've been sat down. And he gave me a pad and he gave me a pen. He said, start writing, start writing your feelings. Mm -hmm. He's like, write, write what's bothering you. He was like, you know, it doesn't matter what you write. He was like, doesn't matter if the words are spelled right. Just start writing. Mm -hmm. And um, the first thing I wrote, Melody, was angry. Then I started writing hate. Then I started writing the people who I thought that I hate. And then I started noticing how I was writing things from my childhood that I was, that I had suppressed. Mm -hmm. um, I, I stayed in the hospital for three and a half weeks. Um, I came out and I was a wreck when I came out because I was told that I could have a heart attack. I could have mm -hmm. a stroke. Um, I would be out of, of work for a year. Um, I didn't have strength. This happened when I was 46, 47. So mm -hmm. they told me by the age of 50, 51 that I will, I will need a pacemaker. Mm -hmm. They was like, because the damage was so severe that I wouldn't be able to come back from it. Um, about two weeks being home, 
having a pity party, crying, um, why me, woes me. I was sitting here one day and I picked up my computer and I was like, and then I was like, I need to be mm -hmm. here for me. I need to show up for me. So what right. I did was I just started researching. I started putting in Google anger. Things started coming up, anger management. Um, I started mm -hmm. putting in childhood, childhood sadness, and things started coming about up about childhood trauma and how, you know, to deal with it. Um, a lot of things that came up far as dealing with anger was the word stillness, which was meditation. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I would sit and most of the time I would cry um, and I would try to do the breathing exercises and I would cry. And then like after a month and a half, I sat one day and this sense of peace came over me. Mm -hmm. And it said, you are worthy. You, you're going to get through this. But, you, but because you want this, you want to heal. Yes. And I, I was like, yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, as, I, as I know now, that was spirit telling mm -hmm. me, yes, I'm here for you. Um, so I started meditating. Um, I started taking yoga on YouTube. Didn't know what I was doing, but I was like, I'm going for it. Um, yoga. Um, I didn't have to change my diet because I, I eat, I eat very well anyway. <laughs> um, but I also, what I did was I made a big decision to love from a distance and that came to with close family and friends and, and no, a, quite a few of them didn't understand. Well, what, what you mean? You know, I don't have nothing to do with it. I'm here for you. I was like, Okay, if you're here for me, then don't come near me because I need to be here for myself. I need to hear myself. Mm -hmm. But also being home, and I was on 13 medications at the time. And I already had eczema, but my eczema flared up worse because with blood thinners, you're not allowed to eat greens. So I didn't have anything. Yeah, I was taking the pill and shooting the shots in my stomach. Oh, wow. Um, so my eczema was out of control. I also still was dealing with depression. Um, so I just started like from, from starting to meditate mm -hmm. and do those type of things. Other, like when you go online, you see like meditation. I started seeing people talk about crystals and crystal healing, chakra healing. So I went down, um, I live in New York. As you know, you're in New York. So yeah. I went down to Namaste Bookstore on 14th Street. I started buying crystals. Yes, I was just there on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I started buying crystals. I started buying incense. Um, the woman, You know, they're, they're very knowledgeable there. So the yeah. woman there, she mm -hmm. was like, you know, I had told her what was going on. She mm -hmm. told me to get sage, and she was telling me how to burn it and, and you know, to wash it over my body and, and let mm -hmm. the smoke carry my prayer out and, I started doing certain things and I realized that these things that I connected with them because I felt like my ancestors were, were here rooting for me. I felt like they were uplifting me. So then I started looking at things about magic. And when I, when it's magic came up, there, there was things coming up about rituals. So I started like reading and, and researching more about rituals. Um, and I started making like, um, a daily ritual for myself because I was home for a year or really a year and a half. Right. Um, and my day would start with once I open my eyes, thank you, Devon, for another day of breath. Mm -hmm. Then I would get out the bed. I would go in my office. And at the time, I was using the office. And this is before the show uh, with Gabrielle Union being Mary Jane. Yeah. I had started started writing on the walls in color pencil. It didn't matter if it was something sad. It didn't matter if it was something with a curse word, but it was very th therapeutic for me, even more than journaling. Right. Um, and then I would do meditation and like a, a, a yoga practice. And um, I just started setting intentions and, and, and doing things for myself, for my, like I became selfish where my husband, 
even felt the way he, he didn't like when I would say, you don't matter. I matter. Right. I was like, because <laughs> if I'm not here, I was like, you're not going to be here. These children are mm -hmm. not going to be here. I was like, because I am the queen and I need to take care of myself. Um, so once I, once I got into a good rhythm of a routine, mm -hmm. I was able to go back to my water class. So when I went back to my water class, I met a young lady there and the park that it's a state park, they have, they have plots, they have gardens. But every time I, I walk by, I always see senior citizens. And she told me that she had a plot there. And I was like, really? And she was like, yeah, it's a, it's a lottery and this is how you do it. So I entered in and luckily I got, I got a plot and I started gardening. That was a turning point for me when I got mm -hmm. that garden. It was like my hands in the earth. Um, I get it when people speak about planting seeds and mm -hmm. watching them grow and being patient and having that journey because you watch those plants. You put that seed in, you watch them grow, you see their journey. You see, you see when some are not successful successful you see when some die some over and I was actually seeing like my story in in my garden so um there uh I had an Asian lady who was next to my plot and she used to like always talk to me about like what certain herbs were and what you could do with them and um I was like yeah my eczema is bad and she was telling me what to do with the herbs for my eczema so I started making things for myself mm. and, um, you know, friends, family started seeing your skin, your skin looks good. good. Yes. <laughs> like, I'm, oh, well, give me a jaw. I'm giving this person a jaw. And then, um, the, the sister who is a friend of mine's at the garden one day, she was like, girl, you out here giving your, a piece of yourself to people. And that was it. Mm. I was like, yep. a piece of me. So that's how it came about. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh my God. Yeah. I have so many questions. You touched on so much. Thank you, Cindy, for sharing this. Story. I've been wanting to get you out here sharing this story in front of audiences for a long time. Told you three years well, ago. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, welcome, I remember honey. back then when we first met and we talked, you told me that your daughter had said something to you. She my, yeah. that, that really was the turnaround as well for you that was not yes it was a it was a lot of magical moments um before i got diagnosed and mm -hmm. also i was diagnosed with afib let me tell you this real quick so afib which everybody knows is i mean it's not really a big deal if you catch it mm -hmm. i mean you can live with afib but what it was is i i had afib all the symptoms especially with women, listen carefully, mm. sisters, mm. with women, the symptoms are like menopause, heart palpitations, uh, night sweats, day sweats. Um, so I went in the hospital April 23rd. Mm. And like I told you, only 10% of my heart was working. And the doctors, when they traced it back by running tests, they told me that the damage had probably started in December and I was admitted in April. So just, oh, just wow. make sure, you know, know, know your body, yeah. know your body. But, um, so Kayla, my daughter, who's also a part of a piece of me, she told me one day I wanted, I wanted to go out and I wanted her to come with me. And she, she just stopped. She said, I'm not going out with you anymore. Mm -hmm. I said, what? She was like, I don't, I don't like going out. I'm scared to go out with you. You don't like when people brush up against you. You, you don't have any patience. Mm -hmm. She was like, you're rude. She was like, you're always ready to fight people. She was like, I feel like if I go out with you, that someone's going to kill us. Oh, no. And she did not go out with me anymore. Not even across the street to the grocery store. Oh, and wow. that's, that, that hurt. That, mm -hmm. that hurt me because I was like, Here's my child. Is, my child is scared of me. She's scared right. of my behavior. My behavior is so bad that my child doesn't want to be around me. Mm -hmm. So that was a that was a, a turning point. That stuck with me also, Melody. 
Yeah. It stuck with me too when I heard it the first time. I'm like, oh my God. That's okay. I took all the steps needed. I felt that I needed to do for myself. Mm -hmm. And then last year, I realized, I was like, I, I, I'm ready to talk. Mm -hmm. Because I felt like there's two areas in my life that I'm still stuck. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to move move through them. I don't know how to move through that chaos. The good thing is I know when those emotions come up, I have the tools mm -hmm. to pause and, and, and be still mm -hmm. and, and to write about it. But I, I want to be able to move through it. Mm -hmm. I want to touch on that real quick. Mm -hmm. Therapy scared me because in the black community, we know it's a stigma. Like, yeah. therapy, you crazy. Therapy, you cool. <laughs> therapy, you need medicine. Therapy, you get a straitjacket. No such thing. Yeah. Therapy is so refreshing. Therapy is so refreshing. I'm going to say it one more time. It is so refreshing. It is like walking through a valley of flowers, of lilies. The sun is shining. No matter what your story is, just to have someone to sit. Because I'm going to be honest with you, most of the things, the two things that I've been dealing with, I don't figure them out. She didn't help me. It's just right. hearing myself speak my truth, hearing myself uh, not be scared to speak those truths, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, not to be judged. So if anyone is hesitant about therapy for any reason, please don't. Please don't go. Go get it. Um, I just want to say this real quick. I have a mantra that I say every day. Because I know even though people are getting vaccine and things are trying to open up, we are really still in a pandemic. So yeah. just always remember that you are loved, that you are safe, you are protected, and you are divine. Mm.